All right, before we get started, I got to give a very special shout out to the two uh, newest patrons of the show, uh, Jay Cerrito, who uh, became a VIP patron, and uh, Krista Forshner, who became an official patron. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, patrons are people who financially support the show. If, uh, if you're interested in that, if you uh, feel like you're getting some value out of this and you want to support and contribute and uh, help us uh, keep this going uh, and grow, um, Go over to patreon.com slash big truth and uh, you'll see there's four different uh, levels that you can uh, choose to financially support the podcast at each comes with their own exclusive benefits and uh, and uh, you know and and privileges and honors you know <laughs> but nah, just all, all, all jokes aside uh, it, it is a way to uh, help us uh, keep the podcast going and keep it growing uh, so I appreciate any help, you know, every, everyone that listens, I, I love you and I appreciate it. Um, but the patrons, uh, the patrons, I mean, sorry, are people who uh, have uh, stepped up and put their money where their mouth is. So a very special shout out to all the patrons out there um, that we got on the show. Uh, you know, this is you're, you're keeping uh, the the, the uh, hosting going and uh, equipment and stuff. And I'm going to get some new uh, headphones and stuff and everything soon with all that. Um, so it'll all be going back into the show. So uh if you are interested in that, check out patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N slash big truth, and uh, you'll uh, be able to uh, get a board over there. Now, if you're a heathen ass motherfucker with a fucking Sasquatch, dirty dingus, you need manscaped.com. Uh, and what Manscaped is, is a company that specializes in ball grooming products, basically, you know. Um, they got this uh, razor called the Lawnmower 3.0 that has these special ceramic blades so that you uh, can go to town down there and you don't got to worry about sc uh, cuts or scrapes or uh, abrasions or blood on the fingers when you're down near the sack. You know what I mean? No one wants to see that. And, you know, your partner doesn't want a fucking, you know, a swampy fucking jungle down there. So do everybody a favor. Take care of that shit. Uh, Manscaped.com. They got, uh, like I said, they got that lawnmower 3.0. They got all kinds of elixirs and ball products like toners and deodorants and whatnot. Um, mats so that you can squat over so you don't got fucking pubic hairs flying all over the fucking floor. Uh, they got uh, they got a new nose hair trimmer. They got a new razor uh, for your face. You know, all, all kinds of shit. Whatever you need, they got it over there. Check it out, manscaped.com. Now, if you use the promo code Big Truth at checkout, you get 20% off your order and free shipping. So go to manscaped.com, use the promo code Big Truth at checkout. You'll get 20% off your order and free shipping. Don't get better than that. Also want to thank my man, Zach, at Heavy. Um, Heavy is a uh, clothing and a lifestyle company. If, you, if you're not familiar with them, you really need to check them out. I mean, basically, if you're into, like, occult shit, uh, stoner, doom metal, choppers, vans, uh, drugs, you know what I mean? Like, uh, a, a, any of that type of shit, you uh, will uh, very much appreciate the uh, products and wares, uh, street weaponry, you know, whatever. In the, any of that, you will appreciate the uh, products and wares that my man Zach has to offer. Uh, you can check them out at Heavy dot big cartel dot com again heavy dot big cartel dot com and on instagram they are heavy clothing and if you're uh, also in the need of replenishing even more of the wardrobe you need to check out my homies at amertamia dot com um and uh they are a lifestyle and clothing company that uh cater to our subcultures and old school honor and ethics and code of the streets known you know stop glorifying rats fucking keep your mouth shut uh all that type of shit uh you know if, if that's you know how you live your life you need to check out omerta mia um and uh they're at omerta mia.com and on all the instagrams and facebooks and whatnot at omerta mia um they got whatever you need whether it's a hoodie t-shirt socks fucking scarf fucking whatever man they they got all kinds of shit over there you need to check it out they do most of the shit in-house um they use american made apparel whenever they can um and uh you know it's just one of the best companies out there and it's i'm not say, just saying that because uh they're two of my brothers but it's they really give a fuck they they put their heart and soul into it and they uh and they and they really rep and, and try and do as much as they can without having to farm anything out so check them out amertamia.com they also got an app if you go to the uh apple or android store you can uh, download it there and uh, make things even easier for you if you're browsing on your smartphone. Again, 
over there too. If you use the promo code Big Truth at checkout, you will get twenty percent off your order. So you're just saving money left and right over here. Again, amertamia.com, O M E R T A M I A dot com. Use the promo code Big Truth at checkout. You will get twenty percent off your order. If you're looking for motorcycle parts or swag or you know things, anything uh, motorcycle related, look no further. Check out my man Bear at oldbikebarn.com. They got whatever you need, whether it's for your chopper, your barber, your cafe racer, your stock bike. And they got it all organized by that type of shit. So you can, if you just want to look at chopper shit, you can go to chopper shit. If you want to look at stock shit, you can look at stock shit. Um, and, you know, they got stuff for your American bikes, but they really got a ton of shit. And I send everyone here because a lot of people come in looking for, like, uh, uh, parts for their old Japanese bikes. And I always say, oh, you go check out Old Bike Bar, man. They they got, if they don't got it, then no one really does. Uh, but they, they specialize in that. So, um, but they got everything. So check them out, oldbikebarn.com. On Instagram at Old Bike Barn, um, you won't be disappointed. Also, uh, if you were into punk, hardcore, metal, shit like that, you need to check out PitchforkNY.com. They're a clothing company and record label. Um, And they've been uh, pretty much a staple in all those uh, music genres for for almost two decades. Um, And uh, so not only they got all kinds of fucking gear, uh, but they also do a special uh, limited edition seven inch series called Back to School. And uh, each record has a uh, East Coast band on one side and a West Coast band on the other. Bands included like Rancid, Murphy's Law, uh, Count Time fucking eulogy sick of it all like you know names that you know so um and if and if if you don't know the names you should know and it's definitely shit you would want to check out you know it's all good shit all the records are limited edition uh on different uh limited colorways uh highly collectible you regret it if you don't want to pick up one now and then down the road you want one and you see that they're going for like 75 bucks or some shit get it now at pitchforkny.com if you are looking for motorcycle related information, if you're in the motorbiking or chopping bikes, or riding bikes, whatever, you need to be in touch with chopcult.com. Chopcult is the biggest information clearinghouse for motorcycles type of information out there. You go over to chopcult.com, they got a huge message board divided by categories. So if you're looking for information on British fucking bikes or like American choppers or classic choppers or modern choppers, whatever, like it's all. Every category is there. They even got categories just to go on there and bullshit and send stupid memes or fucking whatever you want to do. Um, besides that, they got an online uh, swap meet where you can buy, sell, and trade parts. Uh, they got an events page where you can check out motorcycle-related events uh, that are going on all across the world. So you can look for a local one. Or if you say, hey, man, I'm really interested in going uh, to uh, Minnesota in, in uh August, what do they got going on out there? You could go check it out. Um, they got uh, they got uh, email list where they'll send you an email blast with all kinds of uh, concentrated news in there. Uh, you know, all around information powerhouse for uh, motorcycles and chopper shit. Absolutely free to join is the best part of that. So they don't ask for your credit card or any of that fucking shit. You just go to chopcult.com, sign up if you're not already a member. Membership is absolutely free. You can find them at chopcult.com and on all the social media simply at chopcult. If uh, if uh, you feel so inclined and um, you still have a couple of bucks left, come over to chopahead.com and, uh, you know, It's my motorcycle shop. We're a full-service brick-and-mortar motorcycle shop. Uh, We do everything from building you a full custom chopper to an oil change, everything in between. Um, Actually, I should have said from an oil change to building you a full custom chopper and everything in between would have been more of a proper way to say that. Uh, We got an online store where you can buy... uh, you know, shop merch or swag, riding apparel, helmets, fucking parts, whatever. Um, we pretty much set up with every parts manufacturer out there. So if it's something you don't see on the website that you want, like say you want a Thunderheader or, or you know, a new Bassani pipe or something, give us a call. Uh, we can get it for you. 508-995-6764, www.chopahead.com, spelt in the most mass hole of ways, www.cho. P-P-A-H-E-A-D dot com. If you are in the New England area, swing on by 13 County Road, East Freetown, Massachusetts, motherfucker. Um, And last but not least, if you want more information on the podcast, simply go to BigTruthPodcast.com. Every episode's there. Um, And, uh, you know, more information about the show and whatnot. Now, if you like the show, please 
hit like, hit subscribe, leave a review, leave stars, you know, whatever, like, you know, and spread the word, you know, uh, tell your friends, tell your family, uh, anyone that you think might be interested in this. All right. I appreciate it very much. And uh, enough ranting for today. Let's get right in the episode. My man, Tyler from Lowbrow Customs. Yeah, once again, we have liftoff. I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Big Truth Podcast. And uh, today I'm happy I got an old friend on, uh, Tyler. You might know him from Lowbrow, you know, a little company called Lowbrow Customs. Uh, or you might know him from tearing up the fucking Bonneville Salt Flats and setting records and shit, you know. Or you might know him from a, a show called Fuel Cleveland out there, you know what I mean? What's happening, Tyler? What's up, Truth? Hey, what's up? Good to talk to you. Hey, what happened? We were just talking a second ago. It sounded way more clear, and now you sound like you're, you're, you're in a different dimension. Oh, shit. Hold on, let me fix that. Is that better? Oh, absolutely. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was trying to be hands-free, but I won't, I'll, I won't screw your show up like that. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no. You, you're, like, infinitely more clearer right now. Cool, cool. Perfect. Good. Yeah, man, we've been talking about this for a while. We were supposed to do it in person, you know, over the over the uh, summer, you know, at, at Fuel. But um, you know, yeah, we're we're still in uh, we're in year one and a half of this uh, the shutdowns <laughs> and whatnot. And uh, but um, but yeah, you were telling me, uh, and and I I saw the uh, the email from Mikey and stuff that uh, you guys have a big announcement with uh, Fuel uh, a new date for uh, yeah you know? yeah we were super bummed like you know most anyone for who would like to go to concerts or motorcycle shows or anything, you know, with gatherings. But we, we uh, had to cancel fuel Cleveland in 2020 because of COVID, you know, it's, uh, you know, of course it's a big, I mean, we had like maybe 8,000 people the year before come through a big free show we put on. Yeah. You know, everyone's welcome. Motorcycle centric, kind of anything to do with motorcycle culture, but we get people from, you know, kind of, and you know, locals and Cleveland people into making stuff, subcultures, whatever. You get a lot of people coming through just to take a look at cool bikes and artwork and paintings and all that. But we just, um, we just announced the 2021 date, you know, we're like most people just bummed with, uh, everything being a cancellation notice, you know, or being put off. Yeah. So we, uh, we've got November 6th, 2021 is our date. And this has always been a, almost always, it's always been like a summer springtime or summer show. So we're yeah. trying something different. We're essentially pushing it out far enough. We hope that, we can actually, you know, be allowed to have the show, you know, the city doesn't shut it down or that kind of thing. So, yeah. um, anyway, we're, it's, we're telling everyone that's the plans and like change and have to go to 2022, but we hope not. So we're uh, full, full steam ahead on, on the show and, uh, it's gonna be a lot bigger. We got new venue, more floor space, we're gonna get more bikes in there because we figure everyone's gonna be so pent up from being stuck, you know, at home or whatever that, uh, we're going to get an even bigger turnout than ever. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I think people are going to be People are gonna be wanting to do whatever the fuck they can just to get out of the house. Yeah, but, <laughs> they'll even come to freaking Cleveland in November. You know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah. just like it doesn't even matter if the weather's gonna suck at that point. It's just something that'll be uh, a whole weekend of parties and good times, and then the show all day Saturday is what we do. So. Absolutely, it's, uh, Fuel is one of the the funnest shows. I, I don't think I've missed one. I've been to every single one. It's, it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's time. great, man. Every year, I feel like the vibes. I mean, the core vibes the same, but like we've switched venues a bunch of times because it keeps growing. Yeah, but uh, it's always just a super good crowd and something about uh, making it a free event, which is hard to do. And our vendors, sponsors, are what helps keep that going. Like you, you know, um, yeah. but keeping it free and then just i mean there's never any bs there's no we don't do awards or anything it's more just like a general it's like appreciation and everything there is freaking awesome worth checking out but it, i don't know we never get any like the i've never felt like the annoying <laughs> like bad vibes or like cooler than you kind of stuff that can no. happen at, at things like motorcycle shows but uh, i think that's part of it it's just it's just a chill hangout and uh, everyone's welcome and that makes it a lot of fun yeah, absolutely, man. It's always it's always been a, just like a good time, and it's exactly like you said. There's not any of the posturing or the fucking cool yeah. guy in or any of that shit. It's just posturing's a yeah, perfect word for it. Yeah, yeah, everyone's just having a good time, man. So, so if 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 this all frees up and you got nothing to do, head out to Cleveland, wherever you're from, and uh, make your way out there in this November. Because from everything I've heard too, like um, 
I'm, I'm heard, I've heard, you know, from a lot of people that are involved in different industries, I, I've heard pretty much this summer is a, is a fucking bust, but fall is yeah. supposed to be when everything can happen again. So, so November yeah. is actually oh. pretty smart. Like, you know, let September roll, let everyone get used to being back into like being able to go out and not being afraid and hiding in their apartments or houses or whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, you know, you know, November, like hopefully, you know, all the, all the, you know, things are cleared up a lot more and. For sure. And we get so many, I mean, we usually get thousands of people riding motorcycles to the show. Yeah. So it's like, well, we'll have like a hundred bikes inside of a wide variety and stuff. And we really spend a lot of time and Mikey spends a lot of time particularly figuring out like a great spread, you know, like, yeah. like rare, rare stock bikes, really early stuff. Like our oldest bike so far was a yeah, 1905, um, up to late model choppers, Harleys, but also freaking Ducatis, BMWs, Yamaha, just whatever. Triumph, of course, it, it just doesn't matter. It's just, the bike meets the the interest factor and uh, quality it's there. But then outside, you know, we walk around and we made up these awards. Uh, that me and Mikey and Jesse just walked around uh, out all over the place, like a mile around the show, just and put out like half a dozen awards on bikes parked at the show that they rode there. Like just super nice bikes. Yeah, yeah. And it was pretty fun. And we heard from people later that were super stoked to be like parked three blocks away and then, you know, go to get on their bike. And here's a little award from Fuel Cleveland on there. But it's great because it's, being outside even whatever it could be a little more distance but there's still a ton of stuff going on people hanging out talking shop looking at bikes and all that so yeah, yeah. hope that'll work and that's always kind of one of the cases that you know obviously you go to a bike show the bike's inside a fucking rad but yeah walking around outside and just seeing the things that motherfuckers rode there is always you know just as entertaining or or interesting <laughs> and, and it's one yeah. of my favorite parts too is just strolling around going to trolling around the the you know a few blocks of radius of, of the event yeah and seeing seeing rad shit um totally but yeah i i do want to give you guys a, a a nod though like you know your your show is very well curated is all everything there is very uh, interesting, uh, as far as what bikes are there and even the art and everything, it's, it's, all, yeah. it's good shit, man. And I'm Thanks. I'm not just saying that cause you know, for whatever that, cause you're on this podcast so that we don't, you know, off we talk mm-hmm. offline or whatever too. Like, yeah, yeah. I, it, you know, it, it is one of the, the, the better shows out there. Cause it is like exactly I, like you said, I, there's, I, there's cool stock shit. There's cool, you know, it's not yeah. just, you know, something all, for everyone, you know? Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. And I have to give a lot of that credit to Mikey because, uh, <laughs> And Jesse and Mikey and I are all, all, you know, work hard on the show for sure. But Mikey's got like a real passion. He really pours his soul into it. And uh, I joke around and say Mikey is Phil Cleveland. So he's uh, given him some some public props because he deserves it. So yeah, yeah. he's one uh, sorting that stuff out. Absolutely, man. And, and uh, he's someone I was going to hit up to have on this anyway to talk about his like, yeah. photography and shit, man, because he's a nasty photographer, yeah. man. Good dude. Oh, yeah. And just oh, yeah. a good dude all around. So, yeah. M- Mikey's one of my favorite people to ride motorcycles with because he's a good, he's a really good rider. He's super chill, like just rolls with, you know, just go with the flow when you're on long trips and bad stuff happens. And, this, and he just never complains, always fun, down for anything. So he's great on top of being a great photographer and stuff. He's a, a solid traveling partner yeah 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 you don't want to you don't want stress cases with you on the road because shit's going to happen especially when you're yeah, on old totally. bikes shit's going to absolutely yeah, happen so you gotta yeah you gotta laugh about it you know yeah. you gotta just laugh about it. that's i mean that's the fun of it anyway kind of <laughs> sometimes it doesn't feel that way but you it's, know it's, it's, uh, it's always the good stories from it you know? yeah i feel like it's the fun of it if you're with people if you're alone and that shit happens you're like fuck <laughs> yeah yeah man my wife uh i was in the fall i was like i've got like four personal bikes but they're for various reasons, a couple of them are choppers that are only for one person, and a couple that are two up. I forget, like the front end was off one. They basically weren't ready to go. My wife wanted to go on a, on a motorcycle ride. I'm like, well, let me go get my brother's dyno and let's go for a ride. And she was like, I don't want to go ride on that. She's like, I want to ride on <laughs> some freaking chopper or something old, something you know. Like you need a little. I love that. I thought, oh, well, the hell yeah, that's why I married her because it's because uh, she and I have been broken down like I'm pretty crazy places for a good amount of time and we, you know it's always always get come out of it and she always a good attitude it's again perfect traveling partner you know yeah yeah that's that's good uh, it's a it's a good uh good traveling partner because you know yeah. you're always going to get home it's just how long yeah. it takes to get home you know what i mean or like for sure. or how long you're laid up somewhere if, you, if you're waiting on a part or some bullshit you know <laughs> we run uh el diablo run riding through baja mexico i forget when it was a few years ago uh maybe four years ago when i've been on a bunch of them uh but my clutch basket 
blitz. Like I've never even heard of. And, yeah. <laughs> and I was broken down on Panhead uh, on the one in Baja. It was like 4 p.m. And we thought we had a guy arranged to come back with a pickup and get us. And anyone who stopped, like, no, 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 we're good, we're good. So fast forward, the guy wasn't coming with a pickup. It ended up being like midnight. We're on the side of the road. We had no freaking water in the, you know, it ended up being like kind of crazy, like in the hot sun, laying in the shade on the edge of the bike because that was the only shade. We're in the middle of freaking nowhere. And uh, it was getting somewhat sketchy until my buddy, Gorgeous Greg, rode finally, found a pickup truck, food, someone would lend it to him, came and got us. And, uh, you know, we rolled into camp at, in the pickup truck, you know, whatever, midnight, 1 a.m., and had a great time. But it was, uh, it was stressful, but also super fun. We had a great time on the side of the road, you know, like yeah. making up songs. And games and just whatever because we we're there for so flicking long and you know, we had to yeah. entertain ourselves. Yeah, People kept stopping you, and trying to give us tequila. We're like, no thanks, man, give us water. You know, yeah, yeah. Because you're getting dehydrated <laughs> and delirious on the side of the, the desert yeah. road. Yeah, yeah, a bag of jerky and a freaking one bottle of water <laughs> you didn't cut it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but that's the shit. Like you said, you know, afterwards sucks during it, but afterwards it's fucking awesome. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Totally. <laughs> so yeah, man. Well, fuck, man. Like you know. Lowbrow Customs has been a mainstay in the uh, in the, the the motorcycle and, and, and chopper world for the last decade and, and or more, you know. And fucking, uh, I'm sure people um, are kind of you know everyone I know, you know, pretty much everyone in the motorcycle scene knows you knows you guys. So like maybe uh, I'm sure people are probably interested in hearing you know more about like how it started. I, I mean, I remember you know back in the day day when you were first first starting and and uh when we met on like what was it like on the triumph choppers like fucking yeah, yeah. message I, board yeah. or some shit no it wasn't even a message board it was, like e- it was an email list or something uh <laughs> yeah it was a yahoo it was yahoo groups triumph choppers like yeah like an email group or something and uh shoot man that was like 2000 you know what i mean it was I don't know, it was maybe late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere in there. Yeah. But uh, I mention that to people all the time because I've known you so damn long. And it's great to, uh, there's like certain people, you included, it's just like, man, still in the mix, <laughs> you know, doing it. And it's just crazy to think it's been 20 years. You I know, know, I know. Uh, totally <laughs> crazy. Because I remember like, shoot, I was, I got my first triumph in the late 90s. I, I'm i 40 now. Oh. I turned eight, I was like 18 or something and uh, didn't. I'd ridden, you know, like three wheelers and built mini bikes and that kind of stuff. I never had a motorcycle. And, uh, for some reason, just like decided I wanted to get a motorcycle and like the way Triumph looked and ended up finding one in the trading times, bought an old, uh, dirt tracker out of some, some hillbillies place in middle of nowhere, Ohio, a badass bike, uh, though I didn't even re- really realize it at the time, but, uh, rode that thing, didn't know how to turn a wrench hardly when I started and, uh, ended up, you know, a year later, uh, reading manuals, making phone calls you know, posting things in like the Yahoo group, whatever, figured out how to rebuild my top end. Yeah. Fast forward another year and I decided to chop it and, uh, end up with, uh, you know, rigid frame, girder front end, freaking foot clutch, suicide shift. <laughs> you try have like pretty, pretty gnarly bike for, uh, for my first chopper. Sure. And, uh, it was looking back, it was okay. It was kind of ugly. It was totally ugly, I guess I would say now, but it's like everyone starts somewhere and it was a great learning experience to build it. And, uh, you know, that's what got me going. That was uh, the main thing, man, was like I would like call a guy or a parts supply place and they would maybe mail me a bunch of photocopied pages of a catalog. And then you're calling and sending money orders and all. And I'm like, man, this is painful. <laughs> and yeah. then like maybe the parts don't show up. Trying to find chopper parts was pretty much impossible. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, they're just they're not like it is now, that's for sure. And uh, that's where I was like, man, I, uh, I could do better than this. And I was a sign maker, like meaning lettering, work vans, shop windows, do all my friends' tattoo shop windows, um, graphic design. I, I was doing a simple website starting in the late 90s. And uh, so I had all the tools to like make a logo, make a simple website, self-taught programmer. So like not a real serious one, but like I could get around pretty good. You know, I was sure. able to make websites. So that gave, gave me all the tools to like make a brand, right? So yeah. I, this, uh, this is before like Wix and stuff where you could just get on there and drag and drop shit and make a website. Oh, dude, you, you, yeah. you had to like hard code that shit. With I hard coded every page of the website, every page. And at that time, I didn't even know how to use templates or anything, which was, and that's still super outdated now, but no, it was hard code every page of code, raw HTML. And then I remember I figured out how to embed a PayPal button on the pages so I could put like assign a value to it and make people buy things, you know? And so I started selling, uh, using my sign making equipment and, uh, making stickers 
and uh, printing shirts. Like I, in my, when I was 15, 16 or so living at home with my parents, I used to screen print stuff in the basement, like behind the furnace where it was dark. I'd burn screens and uh, print punk band t-shirts and patches and like a lot of older stuff too. But uh, I'd go to punk shows and just sell patches for like a dollar outside the show, get enough money to go on the show and have a good time. And that's kind of like what I did through my teen years to make money to go to shows. And, uh, and I was also working at McDonald's, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. you know, to supplement my McDonald's income and sure. Burger King income. Uh, but anyway, so I had like, you know, I kind of had the bug for like business, you know, I understood these things already. So, uh, I started doing like kind of underground chopper stuff, which a lot of British related, you know, chopper t-shirts, stickers, getting in like dice magazine, like the first few issues and such from England when they were still in London yeah. and, uh, just like selling that kind of like kind of the underground media and, and stuff. And then started slowly adding like little parts here and there, but that I think took me a couple of years. But then I ramped up pretty quick on starting to make parts and carrying stuff. Uh, another guy who we've been, I've been dealing with forever and you think, you know, is Jeremy Cup from Healthy Fabrication. Uh, I think Jeremy was the first part brand I started carrying and we still sell his stuff. He does a lot of manufacturing for us. Super good dude, good friend. Uh, another guy who's just been in it for, for a long time and I'm sure will be until he's dead you know oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway yeah so the early years I mean it was real slow it was five years uh, the first five years I was still a sign maker full time and did lowbrow like evenings and weekends and this was all out of a half a duplex in Perma, Ohio which is like what the where the Drew Carey show is based on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where, I, yeah, where yeah. I grew up but uh, little you know moved from a spare bedroom into the basement and then uh, took over part of the garage over the years and then finally moved out to the country and got a tiny house with a big outbuilding and uh, ran my sign company in Lowbrow out of there for seven or eight years <laughs> until we finally got a proper, I thought I had employees and no bathroom in the outbuilding and a baby in the house that I didn't want woken up. <laughs> and I was like, all right, we need to get a legitimate shop with a bathroom and where we're legally allowed to operate a business and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, that was, that wasn't that long ago, honestly, that was like 10 years ago that we moved into a real building. Um, this is our 16th year in business right now 17 almost something yeah. like that it's yeah, been no. a minute and, i mean yeah it's it's it, 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 I, it's as long as i can remember you know what i mean like i i thought i would have thought it was actually more like 18 19 but I, yeah, yeah. It, when when you get that far back it starts getting a little blurry you know what i mean yeah <laughs> well you know man something that's crazy and i mean i don't know it's not that crazy but it kind of is when you think about it like I mean, shoot, there wasn't YouTube, there wasn't Facebook, there wasn't Instagram, there was none of the stuff that everyone takes for granted now, you know? No, no, there no. was the only sharing of knowledge when it comes to archaic chopper stuff or fabrication or metalworking was like, like you have these email groups or you find the local guy, you know, word yep. of mouth, who hopefully, you know, you hang around and bug long enough that he'll show you some stuff. Um, but it was really, uh, really widespread, like... Uh, you know, spread thin, I guess, and why it, it was tough to get the knowledge. And now, uh, now there's so much great information, and you can connect with people with like world class skills so easily with the internet. So if you want to learn how to, you want to get really good at bead rolling, you can find someone, no problem. You, know, you can read up and watch YouTube videos and all that stuff. It just it really helped, I think, amplify the quality of bikes getting built oh, uh, all over the place. I mean, absolutely. it's through the roof, you know. Oh. Yeah, but it, it, it's like anything. There's a natural progression. Like, you know, like you've been around a long time, but like I remember like, you know, even in anything, right, like skateboarding. Like mm -hmm. about the time I was getting out of skateboarding, like ollies were like only been around for a little while and everyone was just trying to yeah. ollie as high <laughs> as they can and shit. And like the shit that was our hardest shit to learn was like the the first shit the new kids learn. So they take it right. and then they progress farther. Never mind, you know, like you said, like the, 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 the sharing of information, like, you know, you know, when, you know, 20 years ago, it's like you said if a news group or like an email list was like a godsend to us because you know because there was only so much you know you could find out like in, in between swap meets or whatever where you like right. hopefully would run into someone or find a part or something like you know or uh, but like you said like if you couldn't if you had no one locally that was around to like show you shit like you just had to either figure it out yourself or get little tidbits wherever you could and it wasn't like you said like today where you can you know, everyone's just a click away, you know what I mean? Like, and it, yeah. it's crazy. Or everyone's got a YouTube video showing you how to do something. So it's, it's right. you know, and it's, it's awesome. And, and, and except when people put bad information out there, <laughs> but, but that's not as bad yeah. as it used to be. I think, I think like quote of, 
you know, the, the, the court of public opinion would speak out if someone was telling you to do something absolutely wrong now, you know what I mean? For sure. For sure. Yeah. It's like the building on knowledge and then also just seeing what's capable, right? It's like, yeah. it kind of breaks down a barrier. You see someone else doing something you're like, you know, it's possible. You're like, Oh, well shoot, maybe I can do that. Right. Like yeah. uh, a good example of that, or like the building of knowledge and skateboarding is like Tony Hawk doing a 900 or whatever. And then I think it was in 2020, some 11 uh, year old, I think in Brazil landed a 1080. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. he's 11. It was just freaking crazy. And they're like, but would that kid have ever tried that had Tony Hawk not done a 900? And uh, he would, you know, probably not, uh, maybe eventually, but like it, it just, it's that exponential, growth of like ability and knowledge people are just building on other people's accomplishments you know yeah, which is yeah. great you know yeah it just, cool. it just builds everything up and and takes it to the next level and 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 it's funny that you said that because like you know i look at my old 64 chopper my first chopper and like you said you uh -huh. look at your old chopper and you know they're not like what we're doing now but like at the time it was cool but you know it's like, yeah but you know, knowledge in general. Now, like a lot of dudes first builds that look like fucking show bikes. Like, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? It yeah, wasn't right. like that. Like when, when it was like me, you and that dude, Hackasar and like a couple yeah, other dude, people. I, you, I think <laughs> of that guy once in a while. What's he doing right now? I have <laughs> no idea. But I just remember that motherfucker would be in like, he was a Southern ass motherfucker, dude. He'd be in yeah. like flip flops and like short jean shorts, like fucking yeah. stick welding bikes. Like, and it was like, oh, dude, yeah. like how many calluses and shit do you got on your fucking legs and burns and shit, dude? Like, <laughs> I think he never took a break from like, say when people were hardtailing trying for the seventies, <laughs> you know, built out he continued i think yeah. straight on until that yahoo group in 2000 which is <laughs> that dude yeah he was an ornery guy man he was yeah. uh interesting the, yeah. the kind of guy the internet was made for you know yeah, he yeah. fired up <laughs> exactly man but it was funny as fuck man but yeah uh but yeah so you know everything everything progresses naturally man but yeah. like so like what when was like the transition like i i know you started out like i remember you, you know printing shirts and i remember one of the things that kind of propelled you guys was like you were at like every event for a while for like years yeah, dude. Yeah. you guys would be yeah, everywhere yeah. dude like yeah. that's i ran into you like every event you know it was just like yeah for sure and, and, and i uh, and that's a big part of the reason i started lowbrow was for bike part money and tattoo money and travel money yeah. and uh like I've been getting tattooed since I was 16 and working on a body suit. I'm more than halfway there. And, uh, you know, being rolled, I'm shit. I don't know. I'm overdue to get tattooed. That's another, because of COVID, but that's another story. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah man, the, I love traveling. I always want to go somewhere I haven't been. And so really tied in. It's motorcycling uh, itself and also the business being in the industry really let me go all over the place. And it was cool. It was just kind of an excuse, like, uh, cause it let me go places and do cool stuff, but also have like, try and make a living doing it, you know, sure. which worked out. So it was good. But, uh, man, I've done so many freaking events and I'm not complaining cause I've had a ton of fun and they're great, but like, uh, shoot 2020, uh, not doing any events was was great. <laughs> a really good break. Well, it's different doing, now when, you know, when you got kids and shit, you know what I mean? It's a yeah. little harder. To... Yeah, I'm married. I've got two kids and uh like, you know, like being being with them. We try and do a lot of family family trips and stuff. Uh you know, try and get traveling in there as well as solo still or just with my wife, but yeah, hitting all the shows. I mean, uh, that's super valuable. For, I and I would say across any industry, the uh the value if you're not a son of a bitch and like you generally are a good person to get along with people, I think it's super valuable because you know, man, just in face like this, like if you get along with someone, if you want to like hang out, drink a few beers with someone, well, of course you're going to like, if, the, if there's a way to do business with them, hell yeah. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. it's just, it's really easy. It's like, so I don't know. I go to chopper events because I'm the chopper guy and I'm in the industry, but it's, I'm in the industry because it's my passion. You know what I mean? I'm not in the industry just because I can make money doing it or it's what I'm trying to do for a living. It's because what I love. And so that comes through. I think it makes it real easy because I'm just hanging out with whether it's, uh, it's you or someone else who, who's in the, the chopper or motorcycle industry or it's just dudes who are into bikes or into fabrication or whatever. We're all, we all have the same interests. Um, there's a lot of commonalities there. So it's, going to all these events just hanging out man it's like uh that's what helped build lowbrow slowly i mean it was a ton of effort uh, a ton of time investment you know and work i mean i worked my ass off for years and years and years like sure. full-time job plus plus lowbrow so um that's all i did before i had kids really but 
so yeah, I mean, part of that was going to all the events, sponsoring events, racing motorcycles, just going on rides for fun, you know, doing things like the gypsy run, uh, Walter's gypsy run where, you know, stuff like that, where it's like, man, if I hang out with, with someone and have a great time with them, we're sleeping in the dirt, drinking beer, riding motorcycles. I don't know. Are they going to buy their motorcycle parts from me or from someone else? Probably yeah, from yeah. me, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's not why I'm doing it, but it's just like, that's kind of like the, it just works the out. gravy. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, Hey, I'm just like having a good time just like everyone else. Uh, and it, you know, I don't know. It's just, I think again, it's like that, uh, authenticity. It's like, I'm not doing this. I didn't pick this cause I think it's the best way to have a business. I'm doing this because that's what I love and it's just a hobby and it makes it easy because lowbrow is very simply an extension of my life. Yeah. And if people don't like that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Like if we don't, you know, float your boat or don't have the style parts, you like, that's cool. You know, someone else does, but if it uh, resonates with you, great. And enough, you know, our, our company resonates with enough people. All right. So we had a little glitch. That's what happens when shit happens on the phone and we're dealing with the digital age, but by and large, we're good. We're good. I, I got, I got Tyler back here. Um, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so you were talking about, uh, we, you know, what we were talking about before we wrapped, before we uh, lost uh, uh, connection was um, just, you know, being there, being at events and being on rides and setting up. And, and, you know, I think we were just talking about the experience of being, just being there and like meeting yeah. people and hanging with people face to face is, is way more, makes, establishes way more of a connection than just, you know, talking to someone online or on the phone or, you know, For through sure. emails and stuff. It, it just makes things more solid and more real. I, I 100% uh, know exactly what you're talking about with that, man. And that's part of the reason why I love going to shows and setting yeah, up yeah. is just, just being able to fucking hang out, man, and, 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 and hang out with like-minded individuals and, and uh, uh, you know. Yeah, a lot of that's I, I know you understand because I see you at every show I'm ever at, too. <laughs> and yeah. same with, like, Pat from Led Sled. You know, there's certain people, like, I mean, you just see them at, like, you know, every show because yeah. it's, uh, you know, shoot, it's what we do and it's fun. And, you know, it's, uh, it feels really good to be somewhere I've never been at some motorcycle gathering and then like meet people who are customers or, or showing you their bike or, you know, Hey, I, you know, that YouTube video helped me out and I rebuilt this engine or whatever. It feels really good. And it's cool to um, put names to faces or some, man, uh, there's some customers we deal with that I've been dealing with for freaking 15 years, sure. you know, and then I get to meet them in person. It's really freaking cool because I know their names because I see it on like packing slips <laughs> like yeah, packing yeah. Boxes, but, and uh, you see that same name over the years. And, uh, but yeah, anyway, it feels really good to, to have that kind of relationship and support with someone, you know, it's not about, to me, that's not about like, it's not just about selling parts, you know, it's a lot more than that. I think it's really cool to, um, yeah, I don't know, just share the experience of working on this stuff together and, and, uh, and you know, like-minded people absolutely man absolutely so when did um you know how did you get more involved in the i know like you know you you were you were screening your own shit and and and, and cutting your own you know plotting and cutting your own stickers and and you know doing yep. stuff from your sign maker trade and 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 uh you know in the in your diy your diy punk rock root, root ethics of like screening shit yourself um yep. how did you grow it or like like how was the process just from this is just interesting in like the yeah. the evolution of, of lowbrow like how did you go from that to like um starting to like manufacture your own parts to like, to the level that you're manufacturing now, because that's, that's a huge jump, man, you know? Yeah, for, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I love talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, so like, I mean, it was, well, one, it was, it wasn't overnight. There's definitely been some, some like spurts of growth or whatever from, uh, like I remember like 2007, eight, nine kind of with a housing crash and all this and that no one's buying hundred thousand dollar fat tire choppers, you know, yeah. but that's really, it's like low brow really crazy those years. And I think in part, because we're really starting to have a lot more parts get and just being a little more known for home builder kind of stuff. And it was, it was basically, it was like the punk end of that, of the chopper of the, of the high dollar chopper scene, right. Which was like the DIY, you know, Hey, I can do better than that kind of, kind of yeah. ethics. But so went from, I mean, the main thing was, I really put like every dollar back into the company. So I remember my first order, man, and it was for like a few stickers and it was like, you know, $8. And I remember like, hell yeah, I was so freaking stoked. <laughs> Cause like, you know, my, someone found my website and it worked and they, you know, bought some stickers and I made those stickers and I mailed them out and it felt really good. 
Uh, and while I did use some, like my intention to be able to travel or get tattoos just for that, you know, I, I'm sure I spent some of the, the money from lowbrow, uh, on that kind of stuff, but, but not much. Most of it was putting money back into like t-shirt blanks and ink and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was putting a little print ads in Dice Magazine, I think certain issue four or five. And there wasn't at the time, it's kind of funny. There wasn't that many like subculture kind of chopper magazines. It was all just the stuff you would find at the bookstore or whatever, yeah. uh, easy riders and things. So, uh, I would advertise in some of the, uh, hot rod and like rat rod magazines. And I went to a lot of those kind of shows because there wasn't any like vintage chopper shows. There was, you know, vintage like Harley shows more of like the, uh, you know, like Wafion and these things have been going on forever. Not like, uh, not like now where you have like really like chopper shows and stuff, but, um, you just put in time and effort into all that stuff. And then I've always tried to focus on what I'm best at. And if there's, so we don't do manufacturing in house. I work with a bunch of different vendors, tons of them in Northeast Ohio and such. But my thought was always like, why buy a CNC machine and have an you know employee to run it when I can have three different CNC shops I work with. And if one's too busy, I can send the work somewhere else. Or if we don't have any work for the CNC machine for, three months i don't have to pay the bill every month and stuff yeah, you know yeah, so yeah. um basically just trying to like i'm good at uh i'm good at product design i do most of the parts design uh, for lowbrow and nowadays i work with a couple other people who who help out who are actually trained because i don't have anything but a high school degree yeah. but uh uh you know who are actually engineers and, and i took night classes for solid work through dcad uh not that long ago i used to just do napkin drawings and do Adobe Illustrator scale drawings and hire people who could do solid works. And then I started doing it maybe four years ago and, uh, and love it. So I can just go straight from my brain to design instead of trying to explain it all verbally. But uh, really it was just a slow progression. It was trying to find people to work with who made cool stuff and they could make it more than once and we're good to deal with. And we got along with, you know, yeah. um, so guys like Jeremy Kupfer, I mentioned guys like you, you know, we got chop head parts on the shelf. People can actually, you know, don't just want to be in the motorcycle or chop machine, but they actually are, you know, they're making parts, uh, and, and can do it. And there's been a bunch of cool parts and cool brands that we carried for a little bit. that kind of fell by the wayside over the years because I find that a lot of times someone who's like a really creative person or a great fabricator, or a great designer doesn't necessarily mean they're good at production, right? It doesn't mean they're sure. going to have a business sense of, like economy of scale and be able to make things uh, at enough. Like I, I pride myself on being a good manufacturer, a good buyer where we can make things really high quality that fit well, but get them made um, affordably so we can sell to our customers at a really good price. You know, yeah. like we're, we're not trying to like get something super cheap and sell for a crazy amount of money. It's like, I'm trying to do cool, low run, low quantity American made stuff uh, as much as possible and keep the pricing like super reasonable, you know? Sure. And, uh, and, and that's part of the reason for the success too, is just really focusing on that. I mean, I'll, if I hear, there's, you know, I'll take the tiniest issue with the product and we really try and fix it, improve it and whatever. And if we can't, we might just scrap that product and totally redesign it or whatever. And that attention, um, you know, pays off over the years. People have, I, I think grown to trust us for quality and fit and, that if there is a problem, we're, we're there to back it up, you know, to re take a return or fix it or, you know, you know motorcycle tech support or whatever. And uh, I don't think there's any one big secret to, like, to us going from printing stickers in my duplex to where we're at now with a big warehouse and 15 people and, you know, hundreds and hundreds of our own product designs and thousands of other people's in, in, in stock. It's more like, um, <laughs> you know, it's like 100,000 little things. So you oh, do yeah, over, and over, sure. and over and over and over and over and over until like it's if i knew then what i know now what it took to get here i might have been like oh screw that man i'm gonna like go be a fucking scooby dive instructor or something yeah, you know yeah, yeah, i might yeah. have been a totally different path but uh luckily i'm slightly ocd and i have a uh, i never sit down and have a strong work ethic and i think those are other important pieces of the pie uh just hard work and time and and you know caring you know so not an easy answer but i think that's pretty on yeah, point. No, no, and that's good for people to hear you know because you know there's always the next generation of people coming up that want to get involved in shit and, and know that sure. you know i mean i think by and large everyone i know 
in the industry that I'm friends with in the industry, like nothing was just handed. It was never an easy right. road. Like it was always, uh, you know, slow growth and trial and tribulations and then like mm-hmm. slow and steady wins the race. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And, 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 yeah. And continuous problems. There's always a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's well, like, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, that's my job is freaking dealing with problems and it, sometimes it's quite frustrating, but, uh, that's the job, you know, uh, trying to orchestrate and keep things running smooth and, um, a couple pieces of advice for any, any business or industry or, you know, thing like that. One would be, um, if for people, like if you're trying to find people to work with who support your dreams, which I've found, I've got an amazing crew at Lowbrow. Every single person is awesome and kicks ass and is responsible and cares about the company and, and, and vice versa. Like I care about all of them. They, everyone's well compensated. Uh, and, uh, they're all my friends, you know, but, uh, if you, if you're not sure if it's the right person, it's just not the right person for the job. Right. So it's like, if you're working with someone, uh, like I met Mikey, we we're friends. We started working together, me and him and Jesse from the gas box on fuel Cleveland. And it was just right away. Like, Holy shit, this dude rules. And here I find out Mikey was managing a cell phone store and, but he was this amazing photographer. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You know, like yeah, yeah. you're working for T-Mobile. It sounds like hell. I can't even imagine and uh, like right away, I was like, man, I, you know, we joined Lowbrow and we worked it out before the show actually happened. He was working at Lowbrow. Um, but the point being, it's like identifying those, those people, it's, the right people are out there, no matter what the freaking task is. I don't care what you're trying to do. You can find someone who's going to help support what you do. You're going to support each other is the thing, you know, yeah. um, that, that's uh, a real, a real key thing um, that I find important. And I kind of have to keep reminding myself. Sometimes I think like, cause of the things we deal with, it's a weird knowledge, right? It's like, you know, with all these vintage motorcycles and custom parts and this and that. But, uh, yet whenever we need like another, someone to add to our customer service or, or, uh, you know, in the warehouse or for, you know, harder on the tech support, motorcycle tech support, but we eventually find that person. You know, it takes a while. But. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and I find it, 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 I don't know, man, like, and this would be interesting to talk about, get your perspective on it. Like where you think things are going because like, I'm finding it harder and harder to find people. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and it's, uh, I don't know if it's the younger generation, like I, I, younger generations, like, you know, aren't coming up or, you know, like if there's just not an interest or if, if this is like yeah. a dying <laughs> thing because everything's going electric in fucking 30 years, according to <laughs> yeah, California right. or whatever. But like, it's a fucking weird yeah. time, you, you know, and it's hard too. obviously we're all in the COVID bubble and things are just, it's just a weird time anyway. Yeah, and, and a lot totally. of people aren't just, you know, unfortunately for better or for worse, a lot of people are just riding unemployment to that fucking train for stops. Sure. You know what I mean? So it's for hard sure. to get people to work, but that's probably not yeah. the motherfucker you want working for you anyway. If someone, no, you, no. you know, you know what I mean? But um, we had, we had trouble in 2020 because we had people remote. We needed to hire someone anyway before COVID hit and COVID hit. And we're just trying to get help in the warehouse, like packing orders and, you know, receiving inventory and all this stuff. And, uh, we were trying to hire someone for like six months couldn't get anyone you know i think it's because everyone was on unemployment and stuff then we got we hired our our guy clayton during that time because clayton rules and clayton wanted to work you know yeah and uh man it's like again that's like he was the right guy i would like i'm super glad uh you know i mean i spent most of 20 and 2020 uh probably half the year just packing orders and just working in the warehouse because we're low on labor so it's like whatever it takes you know Um, and but then you know yeah we found Clayton. he's freaking it was great again it was just like not the standard guy or not the standard person um the one thing i'd say and it's what i found and i don't know i was gonna say it's i don't know that it's it's sad or anything like that it's just the way it is but I find that when people want to work for lowbrow, uh, it's like if someone's really into choppers, it's usually a worse fit than if it's someone who's like, yeah, like if they like motorcycles or ride motorcycles, it's a plus. Yeah. Especially if they don't know anything about choppers and they don't give a shit that it's lowbrow they're working for. So I've uh, I've had the experience with people who think we're just like building choppers and high fiving and drinking beer all day or something, you know. know. But the reality yeah. is, like, I uh, do. I've freaking work on business stuff i'm in excel half the day <laughs> like all my all my chopping and racing stuff and all that is mostly in my home shop you know yeah. so uh i find that kind of finding the right personality um is way more important than them having like a deep interest in motorcycles and one thing we do uh, of many is we offer like if any employee wants to take 
wants to get their motorcycle endorsement, I'll pay for them to take the Ohio safety, like motorcycle safety course and pay for their endorsement and everything. And we've had, I mean, probably almost all of our employees ride motorcycles. And probably a third of them never had until they worked for us and then gained it, you know, got interested because they're surrounded by it all the time. Sure. And, uh, and then it became like a big part of their lives in many cases. And it, it, that's pretty cool too. So um, I find like you can always find people from other spheres of influence and if it's the right personality, the right work ethic, they're just like the right person for the job. Um, you know, hey, you know, some of their interests or other skills can can grow to suit. And I find that to be easier than the other way around. Yeah. As uh, Jesse says, you can't teach hustle. Uh, so it's like, it's you know, some people might have the knowledge, but if they're not the right person for the job, it doesn't matter. You know. Yep, that's absolutely true, man. And you know, it's funny because. Um, where you say like, you know, people have a perception of what they think it's going to be like to work at lowbrow. Like try mm. being the dude with all those chop ahead volume one through four DVDs. Everyone <laughs> thinks it's just fucking like animal house in here all the time. Yeah, it's like, right. Nah, dude, we're, our noses are down. Like that stuff is when we're at shows because yeah, yeah, when yeah, we're at shows, sure. it's kind of mini vacation, even though we're working. That's when we're, that's our vacation half the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's totally. And I'm in the same boat. And so <laughs> yeah. is, uh, and that's why chopper events are usually freaking bananas because like all the industry people i mean all of you know it's all the usual suspect all our friends and stuff that everyone goes apeshit because they're not just freaking working hard here it, it gives a perception that it's like a, just super wild and loose all the time but the companies the people that you see you know making parts apparel whatever and they're you see them year after year they're there because they really work hard they bust their ass you yeah, know it's yeah. not because they're partying and just kind of phoning it in so yeah. uh but yeah yeah it's totally <laughs> funny misconception I know, I know. It's it's fun, it, you know. But you know what, man? That's that's the world. Like, what do you um, what what are you guys doing? Uh, like, kind of, what's the plan with Lowbrow? Like, kind of going forward. Like, what what's uh, like, what are some of the uh, things you got in store? Or like, you know, wh- man, nothing. I mean, like, well, we got tons and tons of freaking killer parts we're working on. But yeah. as usual, uh, working with Jesse over at the Gas Box, doing some uh, some really nice full frames for big twins and sportsters and iron heads that are going to be fucking badass made in Cleveland, affordable, the nicest, the nicest ones out there. You know, um, those are, those are, I'm very excited about. We're doing, um, more and more parts for sportsters, you know, sports choppers are popular for a reason. They're inexpensive bikes. You can buy used that are pretty easy to chop up and yeah. companies like lowbrow <laughs> have, tons of parts like the stuff i would have killed for you know 15 20 years ago sure, uh, yeah. we just try and make things like accessible for people you know so it's, and a lot of options you can buy a lot of stuff that's sort of, like figured out for you and bolt on or it's a kit and we also have tons of fat stuff that lets people be creative and kind of come up with their own thing but um lots more parts that'll just be uh, like kind of bolt on fitting into a rigid sportster and to the various hardtail frames we sell um, giving people options for seats and sissy bars and this and that if they don't feel like getting deep into learning how to how to fabricate or TIG weld or you know whatever. Yeah. So a lot of stuff that uh, honestly should make uh, custom bike building more fun and easy <laughs> for for people. Um, yeah, and you know what happens is a lot of times people do that. Like I find like you know there's a resurgence. You see a lot of kids they jump in, they get their feet wet. They, they get like a, like a look, like a kind of kit like that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, they'll get a hard tail and they'll get a pre-made sissy bar and this and that, but that mm-hmm. just wets the whistle. And then the next time yeah, around, they're sure. like, want to learn how to build that. And then maybe next time oh, they're not, they're not buying the whole completed sissy bar. They're buying the sissy bar builder kit. Well, like when they're going to yep, weld the yep. bungs on and do that and this and that and whatever. Yeah, and, and, and totally. And then get, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not passing judgment in any way. Oh no, it's, I know. Uh, I know. We've got people from, you know, all skill levels don't know how to install grips to fricking master fabricators or, or engine builders. So there's, you know, we have a, a very wide array of customers. And, uh, I mean, shoot, like I said, I know myself from being a teenager and I rebuilt my first triumph top end was so proud of myself and it worked, it ran and I rode that bike. But the me, like me now <laughs> would have been pissed as hell at 18 year old me because I was a ham fisted mechanic who didn't really know what he was doing. You know, I got through it, but, uh, but yeah, everyone starts somewhere and everything, and, you know, you get, like you said, it, things resonate. It gets someone's, you know, what's their whistle. And yeah, hey, if it's a lower barrier to entry, it's a little easier to kind of build that, you know, bike you have in your mind or, you know, at least put your own stink on it. But yeah. then as you develop further tastes or whatnot riding, you can, uh, yeah, you dial it in. You know, you can always unbolt that sissy bar and make that custom one. You can always freaking, hey, it's winter time for us uh, in the Midwest and you on the East coast and such freaking you got all winter to tear that thing down and rebuild it. You can redo it every year if you want, you know, Absolutely. Uh, 
So yeah, it's a great hobby. That's one of the reasons I've never gotten bored with motorcycling. I've had other hobbies that over the years I might like get to a pretty high level of ability and then I'm just kind of lose interest with bikes. It's like fabrication, engine building, riding, tuning, racing. There's all these things. There's like, I don't, you can't master them all. I, I mean, yeah. maybe someone can, but I don't know who, you know? So it's like, it always keeps me, uh, keeps me interested. There's always something to challenge you, you know? Sure. And even if you only had one bike, it, you're, it's oh, never sure. done. It's never done. Like, you know no, what I mean? Like, for, for sure. And, and, and that bike is always going to change, you know, like, yeah. you, you know, um, you know, I, I mean, for guys like us, I know there's people that get a stock bike and they just ride it stock and they're happy as shit. And that, yeah, and that's, for, that's good for them. I, I wish yeah. I could yeah. be that guy sometimes and just leave <laughs> enough alone and spend more time yeah. riding than fucking tinkering around with shit. But, yeah. you know, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, you know, it's like, and, and yeah. But yeah, man. So that's cool. I'm I'm stoked to see that stuff uh, uh, come because you know, it, it, and especially like with someone like you guys, because you, you guys are like kind of grounded and mainstay and not going anywhere. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, you know, as you've seen through through the years, like you know, manufacturers come and go. You know what I mean? Go and, all the time. Yeah. And, and it's, yes. Yeah. There's been a bunch of guys over the last twenty years I've known that you know made hard tail frames and were great and they're great. You know, but. At some point, they you know stopped making them, or it became too big a pain in their ass, or they retired, you know, and that, and uh, there you go. That's the way of the world, I guess. But uh, but yeah, so we're coming out. All, I mean, all kinds of new stuff. It's like nonstop with a lot of uh, frame stuff, gas tanks, exhaust. We're we're always working on things, and it you know everything takes quite a long time when it comes to design and fabricating and getting things ready for production. But uh, there's kind of always, I mean, not kind of. There's always new stuff on our site every month. We're always putting out new stuff, picking up different brands you know always looking for whether it's one dude in his garage in the u.s or japan or europe or it's a bigger company that makes cool stuff it doesn't matter if it's quality and it's cool stuff uh, we're always on the lookout and we're adding i do man like over 100 products a month lately just like nuts we're just that's crazy adding man. yeah i mean just kind of like i what i was saying about the old days it's no different now um we just reinvest money that the company makes into like tooling and yeah, inventory yeah. and yeah. design and pallet racks and tow motor or whatever, you know, just all the crap it takes to really run a business. Um, if I just started diverting that and just spending all that money personally, that uh, could be really fun on one hand, but on the other, that's going to hamstring what we're, what we're doing. And I don't, I don't, um, like what you mentioned earlier with like electric bikes and this, and that there's definitely like a time frame of, uh, internal combustion, motorcycle definitely not being like new on at the dealership you know yeah but i think in our lifetimes we're we're totally good as far yeah, as oh yeah absolutely yeah. you know there's enough vintage bikes and and people who are going to keep them going but it's uh, the the real question i'm a long-term thinker uh it's uh, always looking like far ahead but the real question is like well at what point do you just like shut down or does the business continue in some way beyond you know when i die which is hopefully a long time away you know but yeah. you never know uh but that's interesting because like i don't know when my kids I don't want my, my daughters to run low. I'm going to do their own thing anyway, whatever that might be. But, uh, like, I don't know, you know, when they're adults, I don't know if there'd be a market for most of the stuff it might be super, you know, archaic old yeah. Harleys just in museums and you know, who knows? Who That'd knows? be yeah, interesting. Yeah. The older we get. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It's, it's crazy. It's a, it's a, and you know, it's hard to gauge anything right now because the world is so wacky and askew and not on a yeah. normal timeline that it's, it's hard to think about anything right now other than getting out of this bullshit and getting back in there For sure. and, uh, and then for we'll sure. see, but hopefully, hopefully, it, uh, you know, hopefully everyone makes up for lost time once things are open, you know, and fucking you know, like you said, yeah. like, I hope everyone just starts going fucking ape shit. You know what I mean? Cause <laughs> we need, yeah. we need it. But, um, but yeah, man, I mean, and one thing you touched on a little bit is like, I know you've gotten pretty heavy into racing and I know you've been doing the Bonneville yeah. thing for a while now. What, what do you got going on uh, with that? And what, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've been racing since out there since 2010 was my first year, uh, with my brother, Kyle. And, uh, so yeah, this year, oh, I'm trying to, I've got, I built and raced three bikes out there and set records. And I honestly don't even know, probably like, I've raced like eight records out there. I, I'm not sure because I've beaten 
different classes and then beat my own records and had them taken and beaten them again. But <laughs> anyway, I don't which even is, know. Which I is probably, cool because you're not a small dude. You're like a very tall guy. And to be yeah, on, to be on yeah. a Triumph, you're like a big wind, yeah. wind sail on that Triumph. So, oh, for sure. So that's a fucking, yeah. that's, that's even like a, a, a bigger, you know, bigger win. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm six foot five and over 200 pounds. So it's like, like my height comes in handy for some things, but generally not racing yeah. motorsports or most sports in general, honestly, because I'm not, uh, yeah, it just, but anyway, it is what it is. Cause yeah. I, I, uh, I love, I love racing and I love building. I mean, I build race specific bikes that are, you can't ride them on the street. They're straight line, top speed, uh, really aggressive riding positions, aggressive, meaning like, uh, you know, if anything comes out in front of you, you're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah. you're not stopping yeah. and you're not turning. Uh, the brakes are just more of like, uh, you know, yeah. the past tech. <laughs> They're not, the, the whole idea is go fast as possible in a straight line. But uh, I'm building a new bike currently uh, for 2021. It's a dual engine 1950 Triumph. I mean, this thing's like, just put it in perspective, it's not even as high as my mid thigh, just above the knee pretty much. Yeah. When I'm standing next to it. And, uh, when I'm on it, I basically wrap myself around that thing where I almost become the fairing and that's kind of the trick, right? So is building it, it's a full lay down bike where my chest is on the backbone. I drop my head next to the backbone. It's right almost next to the top end of the engine. And, uh, I almost become the fairing for that thing. But, um, I built a dual engine in 2012. I had a born free in California and Wink Ellert uh, were at best performance machine at the show which was cool and then i but even better i took it to bonneville that year and i set a record with it first year out and then the next year i set four records with it and all of those have gotten beaten by a dual engine indian uh, out of uh, new mexico it's a really nice bike but anyway so i'm building this new one uh, i was running in the low 150 mile hours on that one and this one uh, should get me on, on gas like not getting into any fancy fuels but gas should be in 160s nice. and uh switching to put some nitrous or nitromethane it can go much faster than that so um, i'm pretty excited i've been working with it with uh, my buddy dowie who's an engineer who was an oem designer at buell for six years and uh tim from theoruchi fabrication who's a close local friend he used to work at the gas box and has been on his own a couple of years and is an amazing fabricator so he just built a frame for me because i fabricate uh but he is a much better fabricator than I am. So this is a well, pretty complex machine. Yeah. And so it's a great team effort we got going with uh, yeah. the three of us right now. And, you know, honestly, when you're racing and you're trying to do 160 something miles an hour and you want like top guys with, like with engineering and structural degrees oh, yeah. to, to, sure. to be, to be, you want, for, you definitely want sure. input input. You don't want to be like, that's not like trial and error shit right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's how I always ran it. Cause that's just yeah. how I run things. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. uh, I, I crashed in 2019 at like 120 some miles an hour and busted my left arm pretty good and had to get some plates put in it. And, you know, it was just an overall bummer. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, uh, but I mean, I stood up and walked away, you know what I mean? So sure. like, I got no complaints, but, uh, it sucked. It kind of screwed up six months of my life, wrecked my bike, had to rebuild it, everything. So I, I but super stoked because I, I rebuilt it, took it out in 2020, the bind of the world finals first run set a record, which was like, we actually did a, there's a, on our YouTube channel, we did a, Mikey did a video on it from 2019 from the crash and then coming back in 2020, but it's uh, a pretty good little documentary. It really gets shows you what racing out there is like. It's definitely not all glory and like high fives. It's like every emotion you can think of, including fear and sadness and stress on top sure. of like, but like you have to have those low lows to have the high highs as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so, um, but youtube.com slash lowbrow customs. You can find all kinds of great stuff on there, including that. But, uh, yeah, this dual engine, I'm super excited. Uh, my wife and daughters are coming out this year with me. My brother always goes out. Uh, Dowie, who's up in, uh, up north, he's coming out. Tim from Cleveland's coming out. All of our friends come, like all of my favorite people from all over the country come out, uh, and, and, uh, race and pit together and crew with us. And it's basically like a week long gearhead paradise of riding, you know, tuning, wrenching, trying to set records, you know, just trying to fix problems drinking margaritas uh with a, yeah, <laughs> a, yeah, yeah. a weed whacker powered blender out there it's just, just like the freaking best time and we're usually out there like before sunrise and we leave the salt at sunset exhausted eat a big meal go to sleep and do it all over again and uh it's usually like some of the most adult fun i have adult meaning like not with my kids it's some of the most fun i have yeah, uh, yeah. all year sure so, man yeah 
That's that sounds rad. I remember when yeah. you when, when you and Kyle came out um, before your first race, when you were coming out to get fitted for your suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To go to Vance and Leathers. Yeah, yeah, I still wear the same Leathers. I hope I do until I die. They're uh, they're great. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, we came out to visit. That was getting ready. That was yeah, probably like early 2010 because we decided to go race out there, and I was building a pre unit chopper and decided to turn it into a race bike because it had a you know a narrowed. Wassel banana tank I got from Jay Roche at Special Seventy Nine. You remember Jay? Yeah. And uh, you know, rigid frame, and I had acron aluminum wheels all laced up that rolled narrow, and um, it was just the chassis was kind of like already skinny and, and ready to you know. But guys, that turned into my my bike Poison Ivy, which is uh, it's actually currently in the the Packard Automotive Museum in Ohio nice. on display with some other motorcycles. But uh, I set a record in twenty seventeen with that one and retired it. Because I basically like it was getting too sketchy. It was I, my fab and race design skills were way past what that bike was, so I retired it. But uh, you know, we'll never get rid of it. So my no. kids, when I die, they better not get rid of it either. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. That's I'll set it in the corner. Some things yeah. are, are, are heirloom status, and yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a, there's not man. I don't assign too much value personally to like physical things. Uh, there's hardly anything that I really care about deeply that's just a physical object, but. Uh, my race bikes are one that I, I hope, even if like, even if my kids don't care, and they do seem to care, but even if they didn't care, um, you know, maybe a grandkid or great grandkid will think it's cool down the line. It'll be at least something to look at. You know, I think it's cool. So hopefully they stick around in one piece for a long time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, any any uh, shows that are coming up that uh, besides fuel that you're uh, you, you you guys are planning to do or attend or uh, look forward to or like runs or anything? Man, I uh. We were, uh, Mikey and my buddy Greg were supposed to go down to Sao Paulo, Brazil last month for the Mama Tried down there just because it was going to be fucking crazy and, you know, we're good friends with the Mama Tried guys and kind of yeah, look yeah. at their shows, like, looking like a sister show and stuff. But, um, that didn't happen because COVID ramped up pretty hard in Brazil, of course, and, uh, and that got called off. Um, man, I'm trying to think of what else. I don't know. I don't know if we've got anything coming in 2022. We do a we do a swap meet at Low Brown normally twice a year or more for free, just like in our we have a big parking lot. We just do free vendor spots, free free uh, attendance, and then they're usually freaking jamming. We get lots of great, I mean, great parts, tons of people. Um, I'm hoping to do one of those later, that maybe this summer, because it's all outdoors, you know. And it's, yeah. I think we could pull that off without with it being genuinely safe and also without any backlash from the city or from individuals getting pissed or whatever, you know, I think keeping it outside and making it, you know, I think it could work out. So hopefully we'll be doing one this summer. The way to find out, I mean, we'll be putting on whatever Instagram and our email newsletter and spreading the word, uh, you know, a month or two ahead of time if we figure that out, but yeah. you have to be determined. You guys have been developing, like, I know it's been, you, you've been doing it for a long time, but like, um, you know, like, uh, you know, like your YouTube channel is like, become yeah. quite, quite a resource for people whether it's just for entertainment or like um you know like todd doing like how to shit or you guys yeah, doing yeah. how to shit and whatever and a lot of cool shit on there you know you, you, yeah a lot of that comes down to, to mikey you know he does our videography and he's uh he's great uh one man he's an amazing one-man production crew because he'll he'll shoot and edit and you know put music to and everything our, our, our videos but yeah we're uh we're probably putting out like a video a week typically and it's a mix of like mechanical how to uh, fabrication how to sometimes like you know when there was events we're doing a lot of event coverage yeah, yeah. Uh, you know we're aiming to come out to your show and cover that you know yeah, so yeah. hopefully we're there uh but yeah man we're always putting stuff out todd is a is a wealth of knowledge and a real character a real personality so people really enjoy uh learning from him and a lot of this stuff it's like man sometimes there's really good content on the internet or on YouTube, but like you can't hear what they're saying. And it's like someone holding their cell phone with their other hand. And it's just, yeah, yeah. it's super hard to, to watch and, and learn from. So I think having real mics and real cameras and good content, you know, meaning good information, it goes, uh, it goes a long way. So yeah, we, we get more traction and we've been pushing a bunch of our videos onto Amazon prime too. So if you're on Amazon prime, you just search lowbrow customs, you'll find tons of stuff like full length, uh, documentaries on like El Diablo run and feel Cleveland and, uh, as well as tech videos and all this stuff too. So there's a uh, tons of stuff. We put a, we put a crazy amount of time and effort into all the, the blog posts and videos and stuff. Um, just to, you know, spread information and have fun and also to help get people aware of what we do. You know, who yeah. we are. 
No, it's smart, man. Absolutely. And, and it's like everything else, like we were talking about, like the production values on that type of stuff has just stepped up too. Like remember, you know, when we were young, like you'd be stoked if you, if you had like a third generation, like VHS copy or some bullshit, like that was all staticky and stuff. And now like everything looks like a professional fucking movie. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> it's crazy, right. You know? Totally. It's, Technology. Yeah. It makes a lot, a lot of it, you know, it makes it so much more, uh, accessible you know yeah, absolutely i remember the first the first motorcycle tech thing i ever had you probably had this too this is why i'm bringing it up to laugh is uh do you remember the huey hancocks or whatever like made those oh, like, yeah. the triumph rebuild yeah. the motor rebuild yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he'd always be like find a suitable drift <laughs> Yeah. yeah suitable drift yeah. was was his famous fucking words dude like i would i always I always laughed about that yeah. but i didn't a see big that big fucking hammer <laughs> yeah i uh it, suitable drift was always this big mammoth fucking spike that yeah. was like jamming through something but <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but uh yeah no i i i haven't watched it i would love to see that just for the for the shits and giggles of it man i haven't Same watched here. that since like in 15 years you know what i mean but that's yeah like neither have i that was remember. a long time ago yeah, you guys should you guys should put that back out. <laughs> yeah, we should. Well, shoot, now we did we did uh, it took us two years to do it all, but we got Todd did a full you know, oh, know. you know rebuild down there, and it's I think it's like thirteen episodes. It's ten hours long. Yeah, and it's really freaking good. I mean, chock full info. Man, we'll have people be like, I don't even own a Triumph, but I watched the whole thing. It's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, or like, my wife hates this because I'm yeah, always yeah. watching. It. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, uh, you know, what we should do is is uh, take take Hughes and splice it with Todd's and like like do yeah. like, like a play by play and see where they yeah, where, yeah, where yeah. they where they agree or where they differ on things. You know, because yeah. you, you always know there's four different ways to get the same result of something, you know. Oh I mean? yeah. So it'd, sure. be, it'd be funny sure. to see to see that. And Todd's personality is a little different than Huey Hancock. He's yeah. a little looser and wilder, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He was pretty pretty stodgy British guy, you know what I mean? Yeah, go figure. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well you remember that man? Like this is something that you you'll laugh about because you remember like when we were younger like there was still like a hard line in the sand with like in the british motorcycle world oh, like, with the sure. stodgy purists that fucking oh, hated yeah. choppers and like any you know like yeah it, it was fucking crazy like trying to break any ground there you know what i mean because i kind of forgot about that you know maybe it's yeah. just because Maybe it's just because enough time went on. <laughs> Those guys are all dead now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, cause I, that's a bad joke, I guess. But, you know, for real, like, I don't know. I think yeah. it's just because they were they're no longer worried about it. You yeah. know, they're re- retired from, from motorcycling or, or whatever. But, yeah, it used to be a real, uh, yeah, you said a real hard line kind of drawn about that. Like, people would find out you're asking mechanical info that you're going to use on a chopper, and they were like, didn't want to help you out. Oh no, you know? absolutely. But there was dudes that in uh that wouldn't even sell you parts. They were like, no, no, right. no, dude. Right, right, right. And it's like, what? <laughs> or you yeah. or, or you could never tell if you were gonna buy a bike, you couldn't tell a guy that you were gonna plan on chopping it because they, oh, would, they would oh, go, no, oh, no, no, hell no. Right. <laughs> no, no. And, and, and as, as I've gotten older, I appreciate stock bikes. I have a stock triumph. Of course. Five, yeah. uh, stock bike, top bikes, whatever. I like it all. And yeah. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a Harley or a Triumph or whatever. I I mean I don't know. I was like riding around two wheels. I have even bicycles, just any of that. It's great. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, I can appreciate it all. And, uh, choppers got me into racing and choppers also got me into stock bikes and restoration kind of stuff. You know, it's just yeah. like, it's just a cycle, you know, it's Absolutely. like whatever, like, like, like you're talking about, you know, someone getting their, you know, getting their feet wet with like a, you know, sports or chopper. Yeah. That's a slippery slope. Next thing you know, <laughs> you've got a freaking you know, a shovel head, a pan head, a knucklehead and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, in no spare time or whatever but and, uh and no, and no money yeah <laughs> yeah no money at all <laughs> no money at all <laughs> especially if you're getting that knucklehead knucklehead realm but yeah but yeah man yeah i, I agree too like you know that there's nothing you know I, I you know obviously same thing chopper guy but man like you know certain bikes stock were fucking dead on like you know like a yeah you know like a like a For sure you know like a like a like a pre-unit triumph or like a, a oh yeah a pan head or even like flat heads you know like the yeah, plenty yeah, of them sure. just fucking rad, fucking stock. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Especially the, o- where, the older, yeah. more mechanical shit. You know, you know, the, yeah. the newer stuff is cool. You know, whatever, and it's, it's cool in a different yeah. way. Yeah, in a different yeah. way. You know, for sure. My newest bike's a '75 shovel head chopper, but meaning most modern bike. Yeah. Except for I do have one uh, SNS panhead, uh, 93 inch powered yeah. swing arm bike, which so that's like that's modern, but it's still like very 
Japan had ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mechanical. Th- th- not the, the engine's bad as hell, but meaning the rest of the bike is still, you know, I mean, we're yeah. not building choppers to make the, the you know, if we wanted the, you know, a rocket ship, we just go buy a Ducati and call it a day, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. So that, so that, which is great too. So so ideally, you have some of each, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that SNS Panet is your, is your highway bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. That thing is uh, it rules. It's got a Baker six speed in it too. Oh yeah, and, yeah. So you're uh, all set. It's like, oh dude, it's like I rode that thing coast to coast with my wife on the back, and just to like ninety five, hands off the bar, sitting back, and that thing's like at like forty five hundred RPM. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? It's yeah, just, yeah. That thing's just trucking. It's uh it was funny when I wrote, built it and finished it the day before and rode it from Ohio to San Diego. And I, I found out like two days in everyone else, like my other four or five buddies on the trip, everyone had money on me breaking down. <laughs> and, uh, but man, Baker trans, uh, SNS motor and the rest of the bike I've, you know, built meticulously. Uh, I think I had a kickstand spring brake. And it was funny because it broke in the parking lot of JP Cycles in Anamosa, Iowa. <laughs> so I walked in about a six in for five bucks, put it on, and, uh, and and went. But yeah, that thing. I rode cross country. Our buddy Jay was on a freaking Ironhead Sportster, and we, my wife, might be just chugging along, just chill. And he's on this freaking chopper, like he's holding onto a hornet's nest. You know, it's like he's going yeah. a million miles an hour, freaking shaking himself to death. And I thought, fuck, man, I'm gonna have a swing arm <laughs> and a six gear, and we made it really easy. But yeah, that's my like. Uh, that's definitely like the long haul, of, like easy bike, you know. Yeah, but that's that's a, that's a rad long haul bike, you know. What yeah, I mean? like, it, oh, it's a it's a killer bike anyway. You know, it's just it's just not as uncomfortable or dangerous, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's not quite as cool, but it's still red. Yeah, it's still yeah. a rad bike. You know, obviously, you know, like you know, I've got a couple of pan heads, you know, in different you know state or pans or pan channels mm-hmm. or whatever, and it's like, but we've had an SNS pan head uh, chopper in here um that we redid for a guy and you know like i'm not against those things at all it's they're fucking no. rad. They're, they're fucking rad you know what i mean it's like, a cool man it serves it serves a purpose like you, well i can tell you when i bought that engine and it was like you get like this crate and you open it up and there's a perfect panhead engine in it yeah. with a super e on there and an ignition like meaning like you give it gas and it's like it's ready to fire it was freaking bitching you know there's no you know it's like yeah. rebuild i mean i love old bikes and I have a 59 pan and stuff, which is, I love and I'll never get rid of. But, uh, yeah, there are a lot, I mean, that thing I've blown up the original one a couple of times, you know, sure. riding it on long trips and freaking beating on it like crazy. Uh, but yeah, there's something to be said for, uh, for, uh, for an SNS engine. It's like, if you want, you still want that vintage vibe, but you want some upgraded internals and, and, yeah. uh, smooth sailing and you got to go for it. They're, they're not cheap, but no. man, they're nice they're made in America. So yeah. they're great. And, Same know, with the Baker Trans. Those things are like, that's like a lifetime transition. They're expensive, but you feel like you're not going to have to buy another one. You know no, what I mean? No, Unless yeah. you have another bike. So they're, they're worth it. Absolutely. But, and it, it's just like a different thing. Like, obviously you're not going to put that in a restoration frame. You know what I mean? Like that's, right. It, it, right, right. It, it's, it's, it's its own beast. It's its own entity. And, um, you know, it, it's, they make a cool chopper for sure. Like, or, a cool, sure. or a cool custom, like, you know, and if it, yep. it, it like for ex- the exact reason you're talking about, if you want to go fucking ride cross country and do shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. You just don't you know? have to worry about it so much. Yeah. I've never had 59, uh, I think the longest trip I've done on it without, without a major problem was like yeah, fifteen hundred miles over like four days, yeah. you know, and uh, and hammering on it, camping, you know, and, and it freaking, it's a Springer and a rigid frame with the pan motor and original four speed, and man, it did great, you know. I I didn't have a single problem, you know. Yeah, uh, leaked a bunch of oil aside from that, you know, it was great. And, yeah. uh, so, well, the, yeah. the, you know, like a pan is like a almost kind of like a tractor, man. Those things are just fucking keep yeah. going unless you, unless you really do some crazy shit, you know what I mean? But the, yeah, yeah, they can go yeah, with pretty pretty favorite. loose tolerances and they'll still function. You know what I mean? Fuck <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, man, it's crazy what people ride sometimes where it's like <laughs> it's unbelievable that it goes down the road and they're like, it's been like that for years, you know? <laughs> yeah, this dude brought his bike. He brought us a panhead motor and uh and and uh when uh and he was like, yeah, this is a you know I ride in a parade or whatever and this and that. He goes, but he's like, I just want to redo it and stuff and and uh when we uh took to, took uh, the motor down uh, my tech here t- took the motor down and um you know when he opened it up like the fucking flywheel split you know and i was like how the fuck are you fucking <laughs> riding this dude and he's like well, i don't know yeah. you know it was like fucking <laughs> yeah 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 he's lucky he didn't freaking throw that and yeah the, the, blow the, the sh- case out and everything else shaft, you know? shaft just popped right out and it's like man I'm not supposed to do that that's freaking funny 
Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is fucking crazy, you know. Like, but it, he said it was riding when he and and I believe the dude. He's not like a bullshitter. He's like, he's yeah, like, I don't know. He's like, shit. Yeah. He, he didn't think he was going to be in for having to get a new flywheel, but you know, he, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh shoot, man. I, I, I know you've seen all the same kind of stuff I have, where you're like, some sometimes it's not the engine, but sometimes it's like the chassis or like what someone did to a chop chopper to make it super gnarly or like super yeah. sketchy, and you're like, holy shit, dude, I wouldn't ride that thing down the block. You know, know. <laughs> they're like <laughs> cruising, cruising cross country on it. You know. Yeah. The worst but, is when some of that stuff comes in here and we fix some stuff on it for a guy, and then it's like we're all like, uh, who's gonna test ride yeah, this that, one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I've had my share of sketchy stuff that you know yeah. you figure it all out as it breaks, or you know, you almost get hurt. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's the thing too, is right. Like when we're young, like my 64 had a big, long square springer on it and fucking, you know, it was just kind of wacky. Like it wasn't built well. Like originally whoever, you know, when I bought it, it was already kind of, um, raked out, but it didn't have, it, you know, it was just crazy. And, uh, yeah. Home, and, a little shade tree, you know, kind yeah, of mechanic stuff. Sure. And you know, I did what I could and, and, and Don had, uh, Don Hutchinson helped me with a ton of it. Um, cool. and we, uh, you know, I would ride the shit out of that thing, but it was scary, man. Like I'd be doing 80, 85 on the highway, like kind of maxed out and, you know, on the, in Boston on, 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 on the turnpike and taking these turns and the spring is like fucking bouncing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah let me just word. make it home. Ugh. But I didn't know any better. That was, you know, and then when I built my next bike that had like a regular, a regular triumph fucking front end on it and was stock, stock dimensions, like except with a hardtail on it, but like stock yeah. rake and everything. And I was like, oh shit, this is what a bike feels like. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, this is like, the way it's shit. supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. totally feel you. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I mean, I still love the sketchy thing, but it's, you get used to whatever you have, you know? And so that's why, yeah, yeah. that's why I think some of that sketchy stuff stayed on the road because people just got used to it and didn't know any better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Hey, I see some people with bikes with the craziest front end flop. I don't even know how they ride it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they do. So they do. Hey, each their own. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, uh, yeah, we got the, uh, the, uh, yeah, this, this is just, yeah, th we could go on with that. You know, everyone. Yeah, stories for days, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. And, and it's funny shit, but, but yeah, man, anything else? I know, you know, is, I can't wait to, we do another one in person when, whenever we're. Cool. We're yeah, around, I'd love to. Because yeah. it makes it more fun if we can have a drink and fucking, and, and see That'd be great. But anything. Ho hopefully that, a fuel in November. We'll see. You know? Oh yeah. So. No, I, I'll, I'm going to bring my whole shit when I, when I come up too. Like, so we'll be able to do that. Um, Still like We'll do a we'll do a low brow round table. We'll get you and Todd and, and Mikey or something. And awesome, that'd be fun. <laughs> be We've fun. never done anything like that. Okay, and get fun. Kyle, get yeah. Kyle, yeah. Um, yeah, get yeah, them all. You know, get them boozed up. They'll be, you know, they'll be fun. <laughs> Kyle's my dude for like two in the morning at the bar at a show. Oh yeah. Totally. It's like totally. me and him are always there closing it out. <laughs> oh yeah, that's definitely Kyle's strong I'll, point. I'll see you, you know, earlier in the night for a little while, and then yeah. and then one thirty two, it's slimmed out, and it's just like me and Kyle and like a couple of yeah. Oh, Kyle's good at last man standing. He's uh, he's a trooper. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's funny as fuck. But um, but yeah, man. Anything else that we we haven't hit on? That's uh, I mean. I think that's the main stuff, man. Um, as far as just interesting, cool stuff we got going. Uh, you know, we mentioned. It. YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash lowbrow customs. That's lots of great stuff in there. Or search lowbrow if you're on Amazon Prime or Roku or any of that stuff. We got all kinds of content out there. And then, yeah, fuelcleveland.com if you're interested in the show, checking out more. We got tons of uh, videos and photos from prior years. Lowbrowcustoms.com. We're always doing new parts. Uh, we have a blog. We're always putting out articles pretty much weekly. Um, tons of great info uh, and content and on the scene and the motorcycle scene, how to stuff, whatever. Um, anyway, yeah, man, reach out if anyone out there is listening and they've got ideas they want to see us do some certain tech article or this or that or whatever. Reach out, you know, tag us on social media or send us a message to the website or whatever. Comment on a blog post. We we really read all that stuff and respond and like you know helps us figure out what people want to see. So um, you know, and if you got any questions on motorcycle stuff. We offer free motorcycle tech support, you know, so you can give give a call, talk to Todd, and uh, he's a great wealth of knowledge. So if you're having trouble with something particular, you know, let us know. Maybe we can help you out. And uh, that's, you know, free service. So I guess that's all I got. Yeah, man. And, um, you know, uh, you know, just, and, you know, lowbrowcustoms.com, and it's lowbrowcustoms on Instagram and fucking. Yep. Make sure you yeah. give it a follow and shit. There's a ton of good shit. We're not on all the new social platforms because I don't care about social. <laughs> but we are I know, like but dude, you, you must Facebook think the same thing though. Like I end up signing up for so many of them. So just so some motherfucker doesn't take my yeah, name. name. Yeah. 
Yeah. I know. I you know what, man? Where I'm at now is life's too short. I can't think about this yeah. stuff too much no, anymore. Because no. like, you know, I don't. I couldn't care less. Well, you, you're not trying. To, you're not trying to figure out how to put lowbrow on TikTok. Is that what you're saying? No, I've never <laughs> seen it. I don't want to see it. I'm like, dude, I'm a grown man. I, don't have, yeah, yeah. I want nothing to do with that. You know, yeah. no, <laughs> That's I, hear I, you, but I, I keep hearing about new ones. I'm like, what's that? And they're like, oh, it's the one yeah. for video games. And I was like, I, what do I care about yeah. that? They're like, well, it's not just video games anymore. So that's what happens is these things start as one thing and then morph. And then like, that's the one you can yeah. be on. And I was just like, yeah, yeah. Know. For me, it's, uh, it takes me away from what I actually want to do, which is like design motorcycle parts and figure that kind of stuff. You know, like, it's like, man. We, we gotta we try and stay in our lane a little bit and you know what let's uh talk about you know younger people coming up well there you go there's your in you know <laughs> you can be, yeah. you can get that hot uh, uh <laughs> a company going on some of these social platforms that old farts are ignoring you know fuck yeah man absolutely but but dude man it was good it was good uh good talking and uh it's, you it's too, been man. a while like i Super said because there, there hasn't been shows and you know we're all fucking busy and fucking yeah yeah, yeah, and yeah it's shit. been awesome talking yeah and then uh yeah hopefully i'll see you soon in person and uh anything you need you know holler absolutely man right back at you dude and i i will uh talk to you soon i'm gonna shut this recording off here